This week, I actually came across this graphic right here and it broke down the 12 high demand skills for 2021. So of the 12, there were 10 that I felt were tech related that could go into this video. And I thought it'd be really cool to just kind of dive into them and just my thoughts about where they're going in 2021, how you can get into them, tips and things like that. So we'll go ahead and start off with project management. And what I like about project management is that in the tech world, it kind of overlaps with product management too. So you can kind of use those a little bit synonymously. Now, the good thing about roles like this is that there are certifications out there that you guys can get. I've talked about this in some other videos. But one of them is the PMP certification. You can also get a scrum certification that will help you in getting a project manager role. And there's also these other certifications called print certifications, which stands for projects and controlled environments. So there's a few different certifications you guys can get, but essentially, there's a combination of skills that you can expect to need when you break into these roles or when you try to get into project management. For each category, I also tried to find what the salary was that was expected for 2021. For project management in the US, the average salary was actually one of the higher ones at around $139,000. Again, guys, this is based in the US and it is an average, but at the same time, that's really, really high. And you'll see that it's probably one of the highest ones on this list. So the next one is going to be coding and software development. The knowledge of coding or having coding knowledge is going to become more and more and more a part of every single job or every type of blue collar job going forward after this pandemic. I had to go with the senior software engineering salary average, which was $113,000 in the US. But, you know, understand that we just said that 139,000 was the average for a project manager. And then we're saying for a senior software engineer that it's 113,000. So of course, this is gonna depend on where you are. If you live in New York or California, these numbers are probably gonna be much higher than 113,000. And it also depends on what type of developer that you are. So again, we already said that there's a couple different roles that fall under the category of just knowing coding or software development. You could be a front-end web developer, you could be a, a back-end engineer, you could be a full stack developer, you could be a mobile developer, but they all fall under the skill of coding and software development. Tips for when it comes to getting into this world, of course, as you guys probably know, all the online resources are definitely huge suggestions, meaning Coursera, CodePen, Free Code Camp, all that good stuff. Whatever you guys are taking online, those are incredibly great resources. Of course, YouTube, tutorials, online courses, building your own projects. But again, there's so many online resources that, you know, the ones I'm suggesting here are literally just suggestions. I'd highly recommend you guys go online and figure out what type of resources you guys like, what type you enjoy, and what works best for you. Third skill for 2021 is going to be SEO and analytics. And underneath this branch of SEO and analytics, I'm also including social media management. So we're kind of going to combine those two together right here. The average social media marketing manager in the US made about $104,000 annually. I think that's an incredible salary for something that a lot of us are probably doing whether we realize it or not on a regular basis. So if you have a personal Instagram and you guys are like following other people and commenting on other people's posts and you're following certain hashtags and you're following certain influencers and you're trying to get people to follow you back like all those things are basic levels of social media marketing so what are some tips that you guys can take away to get into seo analytics and social media marketing one of the ones that i put down was just volunteering to grow someone's online presence or maybe you only pick one platform that you want to concentrate on so tell them hey i'll help grow you to a thousand instagram followers and then you go study the strategies that you want to try on how to grow a thousand followers on Instagram and then implement those strategies on that page until you get a thousand followers and figure out how long it takes you, what worked, what didn't work, what brought you the most followers. Next tip is just going to be to go play around with tools. There's so many different tools to help people grow on Instagram, to grow on Twitter. There's Buffer, there's Hootsuite, and there's like a million other things that will seriously help you out so much if you just put in the time investment of learning which tools work for you, which ones work best, which ones you like the best, which ones make the most sense to you, and most importantly, which ones bring you the biggest results. The last tip for this one is just gonna be to follow big brands or follow brands that just have a really good web presence, a really good digital identity, and figure out what makes them stand out, what makes them successful, why do you follow them, why do people engage with them, what type of questions do they ask, what type of comments or captions do they leave on their posts i mean you guys have to really study every little intricate part of different brands and different companies or different influencers and figure out all these different combinations of things until you find your own kind of methods that work for you next up guys we have photoshop photoshop is going to be a huge 
huge technical skill that benefits a lot of people in 2021 and beyond the pandemic. Now, let me also say too that this does not just mean you have to be good at Photoshop, okay guys? There's so many different tools that are pretty much in the web design world and it doesn't have to be Photoshop, but Photoshop is pretty much the industry standard when it comes to web design. Photoshop is just the skill, but it translates to a lot of different jobs and careers. So just to give you guys some examples, some careers that are really heavy in the use of Photoshop skills are gonna be graphic designers, UI designers, photographers, web developers, creative directors, and marketing people. So for that reason, because there's so many different job titles that you guys can get, I did not do an average salary for this one in particular, but I do have some tips that you guys can take away to pretty much help you start to kind of break the threshold of getting into Photoshop. Like with anything, you guys can watch, you know, tutorials and videos and take courses, but you also need to learn the fundamentals of design. And there are so many design concepts and fundamentals. I'm not gonna pretend like I know them all. You don't have to know everything about every single topic, but at the same time, it just depends on how serious you take this role. And if this is a complete transition that you wanna make into like a graphic designer role or something like that. Along the way, you guys can also blog or write about your experiences because I think, again, these things are really really intricate there's a lot to learn and it'd be a great way for you guys to pretty much just reinforce your learning as you're going through learning these things like i said photoshop has so much in it that tool has so much that you can learn so much that it can do is so powerful. So, you know, if you blog along the way, you can help other people out and you can also revisit your own blogs if you forget something along the way and it just helps you kind of reiterate your learning. The last thing you can do is of course, subscribe and follow other really good designers or creators. Number five is going to be Facebook ads or what I'm pretty much calling just digital advertising. And the reason that's huge, again, guys, going back to businesses, going from brick and mortar to online, a lot of them just don't know how to do things well online. They don't know how to market. They don't know how to make themselves stand apart. They don't know how to drive traffic. They definitely don't know how to drive customers or new customers. So things like Google ads, Facebook ads, even Instagram and Twitter ads, like if you have a good understanding of each of these different platforms, how much the ads cost, how you can actually turn an ad campaign into new customers or new revenue for a business. If you can just understand that and the differences between these platforms, that in itself is such a huge skill. The average salary I was able to find for a Facebook ad specialist was about 49 to $79,000. And again, guys, these are just mediums and averages, but still I think that for somebody who just specializes in Facebook ads in particular, I think that is a really good living to make if you just get really good at doing that. There's a ton of different courses online and different YouTubers you can follow to pretty much understand what they do that helps make their campaigns effective and things like that. And it also doesn't require the same technical knowledge as something like software development either. So it's a really good blend between the two for somebody who's looking to kind of transition into a new technical role. Number six up on the list, guys, is gonna be web development. We covered web developers more back in the coding and software development section. So in this one, we're gonna stick more to the people who are doing like the, the WordPress sites, the Wix sites, the Shopify. Now tips for this guys is that if you're going to go into this, into building websites or doing web design and web development for companies or as a freelancer or just as a skill, I highly recommend learning how to use all the big website builders. So WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, and Shopify. I would highly recommend creating websites on all those different platforms because that way you can know the difference between all of them and what they offer and what they're for. That way you can tailor your services better to each customer, each client based on their needs. And also too, just to build your portfolio and again, just get a, a holistic understanding of what is out there right now in terms of what is powering most websites for small businesses because it's usually one of those four things. So if you get familiar with all four of those, then you should be in a really good place to either do freelance or even try to get jobs doing this. Number seven is gonna be Excel knowledge, which is like so underrated because I use Excel as a software developer and I think Excel knowledge is good in almost any industry. You need to really be able to know how to do function sorting, pivot tables, like all that good stuff definitely will help you out a lot in almost any area when it comes to you know reporting and financial projections and analysis like there's just so many different reasons my personal recommendations for getting better at excel are just going to be to learn shortcuts to save you so much time especially when dealing with big data sets also 
create a financial analysis or a financial projection because just doing that alone will seriously help you learn a lot about different functions, how to connect different sheets. So like just little simple things like that will help you out so much um, on top of just like, you know, taking courses online or watching tutorials online and learning online, reading articles, all that good stuff. Lastly, guys, UI and UX design are going to be the last two we wrap up with. I know this is like number eight, but technically we've already combined the other ones in other categories. So we're still going to go through the last two, which will take us up to 10 right here with UI and UX design. If you're looking to get into UI UX design, I would highly recommend starting out creating mockups and wireframes for somebody who has a small business or, you know, somebody who has a brand and just go out there look at dribble.com and look for inspiration so you can start to understand the mind of good ui designers or what ui good ui design looks like and you can start incorporating that into your own mock-ups as you create them and build a portfolio of different things that you've mocked up and created doing that on top of like obviously joining online communities following your favorite ui ux designers and creators also just taking tutorials and courses and things like that, reading articles, all these things will help give you that experience that you need to start really breaking into that UI UX role and also getting the skills that you need to have that in your tool belt. With that being said, guys, these are the 10 high demand tech skills in 2021 that I think are going to be really good to have going for it. If you guys think I missed anything, let me know down in the comment section down below. What skills are you guys learning? What would you consider learning or think that people should be learning right now? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Also guys, every week on Sunday, I write a really dope self-reflective newsletter it's talking about things I learned throughout the week, self-growth, productivity, life lessons, business lessons, things like that. So check that out down below on my Substack. The link is in the description down below, guys. Also, the link is down there for my free intro to coding bootcamp course where I teach everything I wish I knew before I went to coding bootcamp and all it costs is you guys' email address. So make sure you guys check that out. I appreciate you guys for sticking in here with me this whole time. I hope you guys find this helpful. My name is Darian with Darian the Devil. See you guys in the next one, all right?